guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. So today is update day. Well, basically yesterday for most of you watching right now. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you think of patch 2.2 so far? In today's video, I want to talk a little bit about the forge. I want to talk about advanced quests. I want to talk about the Doom Tower. And I also want to talk about the new unbelievably pay to win champion that's going to be exclusive to faction crypts. All of her information, or not all, but most of her, 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 her kit of essentially, was a leaked or, or, or available publicly today. So we're going to go ahead and talk about her and why I'm very, very strongly against this champion conceptually. Uh, we'll get to that towards the end of the video. Let's quickly kind of react to the Forge and all that stuff, guys. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, uh, some bad at the end of this video and a lot of good at the beginning of this video because truthfully, I'm a big fan of this patch. We've been asking for more content for a long time now, a long, long time it seems like in Raid Shadow Legends. Aside from Tag Team Arena, we haven't gotten anything new in, well, a long time. Now, a little negative note here, and I'm probably a huge idiot. Let me know in the comments below if any of you guys kind of were under the same impression. But, and I'm a content creator. Like, I covered this game for a living partially. And I somehow, some way was under the impression that Doom Tower was going to be in this patch, not in 2.3. So I was disappointed to see Doom Tower because honestly, personally, this was the thing that I was most looking forward to inside uh, this patch. So I'm bummed out because I'm an idiot, really. But I'm old school, man. You know, I'm almost 40. You know, in the gamer world, we're old, right? And I remember back in the day, I'm going to put on my old man hat here. I apologize to you, you young whippersnappers out there. But I remember back in the day, we bought a game. And that's it. There were no updates, period. So I'm still excited. I'm not, you know, I'm a little bummed out because I thought it was coming today, Doom Tower. But at the same time, I'm so excited for Doom Tower. And I'm a patient guy when it comes to video games. I go back to the 8-bit era uh, or even before that in television, Atari, and then Nintendo was really my wheelhouse, NES, the classic. And again, there were no updates to our games back in my day, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm cool with waiting. I just, man, I can't, I can't wait. 120 floors, 12 secret rooms, 11 mini bosses, and a final boss, man. That's what I'm talking about. I can't wait for Doom Tower, really. Uh, that, for me, will be the update of the century. So I'll be waiting with bated breath for that. I actually don't know. Do you guys... I don't think they've announced when that is coming. So let's talk about the advanced quest real quick. Because this is something really, really cool. Could it be done better? Yes, there could be. There's. We'll talk about some of the things, like the, the fight five times in tag team uh, arena series. Uh, well, I see why they did that, wanting to promote their other kind of newish game mode in tag team arena. However, the thing is, is I, you know, these are daily quests here, and you can get up to, after 25 days, assuming that you do all of these quests every day, you can keep farming legendary books because these rewards reset. So legend, most scarce resources, legendary book, epic book, and a five-star chicken, and then XP, whatever. Uh, but you can get that every 25 days, or you can take your time. You, you can get it every 60 days. If it takes you 60 days, they just keep resetting. And if you make it, you know, after a month or whatever, or it, it, there's no point where your progress here is going to reset, okay? You get a point per accomplishment that you finish. You get 250 points. You finish 250 things, and boom, you get your legendary tome, and it all repeats over again. So, you know what? The way I look at this is, and when I talk about fight uh, in the tag team arena five times, well, this is the best reward by far. The Crypt Keys. Six Crypt Keys you get in every single open faction crypt. Dude, that's insane, man. That's a lot of value. When there's three faction crypts open as well, Holy man, you get, you know, a lot of extra chances for glyphs, essentially. And I'm really excited about this. I think the Crypt Keys are a great addition to this. You can also farm uh, charms in here. There's a lot of great resources that you guys can farm. Uh, you can get Tag Team Arena Token Refill as well by using 12 Crypt Keys in Faction Wars, which is great because you're going to need your Tag Team Token Refills to make sure you get the uh, fight, fight five times in, in Team Wars or uh, Tag Team, excuse me, uh, in the uh, in the arena, Tag Team Arena. So... There is a nice synergy there between the faction keys being tied to the faction wars being tied to, again, uh, the tag team arena. I like advanced quests. And, and even if you have some complaints about, oh, they, you know, I wish this was this or this was the other thing or whatever, the good news is, is none of these seem to be super impossible to obtain on a daily basis. Like use three glyphs, 
win three artifacts, including dungeons, deal eight million damage to the demon lord. That's a little bit more challenging, but you can just go down in a in a uh, in a rare in a uh, difficulty level if you need to. And then two clay moss keys, easy, right? So these are pretty obtainable, like I said, and it's nice. It's just it's something that we didn't have in the game before that gives us new rewards. I'm a big fan of advanced quests. What can I say? I'm not going to belabor the point. Forge. I'm a big fan of Forge too, man. I think that I was surprised. I was ready for this update, and I was ready for it to be impossible. Like, you know, no offense, Plarium, but like, super pay to win. Only if you spend big money can you farm any artifacts. But it's just not the case. There, there is, of course, a paid element because there always is, right? Like you can, big spenders will have more success in the Forge than non-spenders, free-to-play players. But with that said, everybody can, you know, these resources, these uh, materials, if you will, they can be acquired from Classic Arena. They can be acquired from events and tournaments in Core Hammers, and they can be acquired from Faction Wars in Legendary Soul Stones. So, I mean, we have access to all of that stuff. And I'm just, I'm kind of impressed out the gate with the accessibility of farming these materials. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the crafting chances because you guys can check this out right in the game, right? It's at first, at first glance, it can be like, whoa, they're throwing a lot of stuff at me here. This is crazy crap, you know, but it's easy to get, it's easy to understand, right? You have essentially, I think it's easier actually. Those are all the odds if you click on your cla uh, crafting chances, but if you go to the forge, that's the best place to go to really understand it. And you can just go right down to here. Uh, the charms, right? All you have to understand are there four types of charms. Rank charms, which determine the rank of your artifact. Rarity char charms, which determine or help boost the rarity of your artifact that you're going to be forging. Type charms, which help boost like your weapon slot, your boot slot, etc., your shield, uh, you know. And then substat charms, which increase your chance of getting an artifact with a specific substat. So I'll go ahead and I will uh, forge one. I actually, I'll be honest with you, I recorded a video that I wasn't happy with, so I ditched it and I rec and I, and I did a few uh, a few forges. So I don't have any of my good charms. Do I have it? Like any? I have a rank charm right now, which I will no. Uh, yeah, I do have it. By the way, guys, kind of confusing here. Clicking the plus button is where to find them, and clicking the uh, the actual charm is how to put them in. I'm sure I'm not the only one who made that mistake. So rarity charm, I'll use a rarity and I'll use a rank. And let's see, let's go with, I don't care where it is really. I don't care where it is. And eh, it's going to be for the arena. So, you know, all the ones that I want, I don't have, right? Speed charms are going to be incredibly valuable. Crit rate charms are going to be great. Accuracy charms are going to be great. So I'm actually not going to put any substats in here. Uh, you know what? I have a billion HP ones. Nah, I'm not going to even use it. Forget it. <laughs> All right, because I'm going to go for Perception. Uh, perception, two new sets. Perception and Resilience, right? So Perception, 40 accuracy, 5% speed. A speed? Thank you very much, dude. That's a sick set for the arena. I can't wait to forge these. And Resilience, HP 10%, Defense 10%. I like those two for defensive tag team arena builds or for progression anywhere in the game. And they're two, set, uh, two artifact sets. That is money, man. That's what you want. Swift Parry and Deflection are really great sets. Previously only available in the uh, in Platinum Arena. I like that there's now a, a, a way for us to get them, right? A way for normal players to actually get those uh, those sets. So really looking forward to all that stuff. And it looks like I can't farm a, uh, a Legendary. I thought I had enough Bloodstones for that. Uh, either way, let's just go ahead and farm something and shut up for a second, huh? How about that? So, oh, I, I don't have the correct, okay, so you need Legendary Bloodstone, I have them, I have them, okay, I get it, I get it, so I need the Legendary blood Soul Stones and Bloodstones, two type of stones, I happen to only have the set for the Resilience, so for that, we can go ahead, I'm sorry guys for taking too long here, Rarity and a Rank Charm, and I'm also going to go, I might as well put it on a helmet, and hopefully, and since I'm getting the defense anyway, I will put the defense in there instead, and let's see what we can do here, guys. Boom. Let's forge something good. All right, so we got a helmet, not six star, five star. We got the speed, attack percentage, and accuracy. So, yeah, I think I'll keep it because accuracy and speed is solid. 
and we're not really looking for attack percentage, but we'll keep it for now. And uh, that's the Forge. I like the Forge too, you know? I think that the Forge is really cool. I think this update is really uh, a great one, honestly. I think it's it's all good stuff added to the game, and I am in reinvigorated, you know? I'm, I'm excited to forge some artifacts to farm and get all my advanced quests done for the first time in a long time, truthfully, in a, in a month or two. The last month or two, I said this in my, in my previous update video, I've been kind of... Um, not as addicted to the game as I once was, you know, to be real with you guys. But now I'm there. I'm back, baby. I'm back. And I can't wait to Doom Tower. I'm really going to be back, right? So that's going to be when it's like, oh, crap. Uh, you know, I have to plug my device in because I'm on it all the time, which is probably a bad thing, right? Anyway, let's get to the bad stuff. <laughs> Dude, this new champion, man. Let me pull up the stats. Be right back. All right, guys, so here she is. It's Lydia Death Siren. Now, there's another legendary champion that was added to the game today that we'll talk about right after this. He's kind of a clan boss only champion, in my opinion, legendary again, but we'll take a look at him in just a second. But this is something I have a really big problem with. Before we get to the kit really quickly, let me tell you why I have a big problem with this. I made a video four or five months ago or whenever it was uh, about the new kind of OP artifact sets putting put into the game. And it ended up the fact that they were a four artifact set kind of mitigated some of their, what would have been incredible value. However, uh, the, the point behind that video, I still stand by. And I hate when games, I detest when games make something that's incredibly OP that literally only the most OP of big spenders can have access to. It's okay. To me, introducing a champion like Rotos is maybe not the wisest decision. Maybe it's all right. Who knows? You can argue about that. But to me, that is okay. It's okay. Make an OP champion. It's cool because everybody can get him. Everybody who pulls a shard has the same chances of potentially pulling this champion. Sure, if you spend money on a bunch of shards, you have a greater likelihood, but you can still, anybody could get lucky and pull this champion on a shard. This champion uh, again, Lydia Death Siren is going to be a champion only for those people who have three-starred every single stage on every single faction crypt in the game. If you've already done that, you'll get her automatically when she's introduced to the game, which should be, I don't know, with the next patch, uh, is what we think. Uh, <sighs> but she's way, she's the strongest champion in the game, uh, especially after the Rotos and Siffy nerfs. A1, real quick, I'm going to go, through, it's a lot of information in her kit, let's just kind of breeze through it here, we'll talk about why she's so OP. A1, attacks one enemy, has probably 100% chance of placing a fear when booked, we don't know what the booking, uh, how much better she'll be on top of this, this is without books, okay? 75% chance of placing a fear debuff for one turn, 75% chance of increasing the duration of any poison sensitivity debuffs by one turn, attacks, and then, this is still her A1. Attacks enemy champions with this skill whenever they place a freeze, stun, fear, or true fear debuff on any ally. <laughs> okay. The number of attacks increases according to how many debuffs are placed at any time. One attack for freeze, stun, fear, true fear uh, debuffs placed. The first attack will uh, target the attacker while all extra hits will attack random enemies. This is an A1? Excuse me? <laughs> okay. A2. Siren's Whale attacks all enemies, has probably 100% chance of uh, placing a 60% decreased defense buff, uh, debuff, excuse me, and a 25% weakened debuff for two turns. Uh, it's on a four turn cooldown, probably can be booked down to three. Uh, also places a 25% strengthened buff and why not a 30% increased speed buff on all allies for two turns. What? has both of the strongest uh, decreased defense and weakens on one ability on an AoE and a strengthen and a 30% increased speed buff on all allies? <sighs> Nullification. Attacks one enemy two times. Is there A3? The first hit is a 75% chance of placing a, t a poison sensitivity debuff for two turns. Probably 100% chance. The second hit has a 75% chance of placing a block buffs and a block cooldown skills uh, debuff for uh, two turns. That one is okay. It would be like a good ability. <laughs> but compared to the rest of her kit, it's like, oh, that's kind of uh, lacking there, Claren. Uh, her, Which is still a great ability, right? Poison sensitivity for clan boss, amazing. And she can extend those poison sensitivities basically, <laughs> you know, forever. <laughs> All right, so uh, A4. Death Hold, which is a passive. This is where it really gets broken. Denies enemy revive attempts. This works even if she's dead. Why not, right? Why not? She's dead. Who cares? <laughs> if this champion is alive when an enemy revive is denied, 
It revives all dead allies with 50% HP and 50% turn meter. And guess what? Grants an extra turn instead if there are no allies dead. If this champion is dead when an enemy is denied, or, or excuse me, if this champion is dead when an enemy revive is denied, it revives this champion with 50% HP and a 50% turn meter. This skill will ignore block revive. What? I can hear crickets in the background. I really can. Uh, you guys probably can't. But what is going on with this champion? Dude, she's sick. She's strong. She's incredible. She's amazing. That's the good news. Bad news is nobody gets her except the, the stronger gets stronger. Man, I guess that's Raid Shadow Legends capitalism, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, it, And I am somebody who will, I won't get her right away, but I'll get her. I'll get her soon. I mean, I only have, a, I think, two faction crypts to go. Uh, so I'm complaining being one of the haves or whatever, or one of the dumb spenders, whatever you want to say, however you want to put it, right? Uh, so I'm complaining because I think it's unhealthy for the game uh, to do this, you know? Um, of course, I'm going to get her. I'm going to use her. I'm, you know, I'm going to be whatever. But I still think it's bad for the game. I just don't think. I, I, I hope, and maybe some people, especially the whales, are going to get upset about this probably. But I hope that Plarium actually rethinks this one. Either just not make her this strong. I don't. I don't, I don't think making a, a character this strong, adding it to the game, is healthy for the game. It's my opinion. I'd love to hear yours on this. You know. Uh, I guess it is what it is, right? That's my opinion. Everybody has an opinion. You know how you know what they're like. Uh, let's go to Undead Horde. So this champion, uh, Saito. Saito looks really cool. He's got the two swords, man. The animators, the graphic uh, artists, uh, they always do just such a tremendous job with these champions, especially the legendaries, you know. Uh, love this. Just love the look of this dude, man. Looks like that, you know, Japanese samurai uh, character. I thought it would be a new faction. Samurai faction. But he is undead, so maybe this is the first kind of version, the first look we have at a new faction in the game. We thought we were going to get bears, now we think we might get samurai. His kit to me screams clan boss. His base stats aren't bad, his HP are a little lacking for a legendary at 16k. His attack is, is alright for an attack based champion at 1300. His defense is solid for an attack based champion at 1178, which again strengthens my argument that he's really a clan boss specialist. 102 in the speed is solid. On the A1, attacks one enemy two times, has a 60% a chance when booked of placing a decreased defense. Places an extra hit if the decreased defense is placed. That's great, right? Uh, on the A2, attacks one enemy before attacking, has a 50% increased attack and a 30% increased crit damage on this champion for two turns if this champion's defense is higher than the target's defense. Eh... I don't love that kind of, I don't love this ability, uh, that part of this ability. Uh, it depends on where you're using him, but for Clan Boss, uh, I don't think you're going to have any luck with the defense being higher than Clan Boss's defense. However, decreases the cooldown of this skill by one turn, mo moving it from essentially from a three turn to a two turn uh, if the target has more than 50% HP after the attack. So Saito to me is a specialist against Clan Boss who is over 50% HP. That way he'll be attacking twice. I don't know the multipliers on Enduring Warrior, but I can imagine that they're probably pretty decent. It seems like they should be, hopefully. If not, then he's probably a mad champion, right? Uh, on his A3 Army Breaker, attacks one enemy, then attacks all enemies except the initial target if there are more than three enemies alive. Okay. Inflicts 20% more damage on the first hit if the target has higher max HP than this champion. Again, Clan boss, always going to have higher max, max HP than this champion on a four turn cooldown. On his passive, we'll ignore 7.5% of enemy defense for each time this champion attacks the same target enemy in consecutive attacks or turns. Stacks up to 30%. The stack will be lost and reset if this champion targets a different enemy. Again, Vendetta is a really cool passive. Uh, and is, so he's going to be ignoring 30% defense on clan boss, essentially. Again, I think clan boss, if you can think of another use another you know 
I think that if you pull him in your early game or mid game, he'll be fine in dungeons, in, in faction, really, really everywhere he'll help you. But I'm talking about end game viability. I see him as mainly a clan boss champion. Guys, that is the update. That is the patch. Uh, let me know what you think. Where do you agree with me? Where do you disagree with me? Look forward to reading your comments. Uh, as always in the description or the, the comments below. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. It's late. Don't don't be too harsh on me, guys. It, it, it's late. I, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate, again, I mentioned a couple times now. This will be the last time I mention it, but if you like the content here on the channel, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we just hit 40K. Really, really cool uh, to have, a, you know, to have another kind of home here on YouTube. So guys, thank you so much. Appreciate you all. And as always, take care, guys.